Hi, I'm Doug Levy, and it's 6 o'clock on the West Coast, 9 o'clock on the East Coast. Uh, welcome to Doug Levy's Explorations and Observations. Um, this is the first of what I hope will be many um, casual uh, chats, uh, hopefully with other people from time to time, where we talk about everything from current events to interesting things that we, we find. Um, on my other blogs, you'll hear me talking about wine, food, travel, all kinds of things. But today, we're talking about politics and current affairs. That's been on my mind uh, a lot. And um, as some of you may know, I spent a lot of time in Washington as a reporter. I know the hills of Capitol Hill, the halls of Capitol Hill very well. I've been I've covered stories at the White House. I know some of the people who are in the news. I have a pretty good idea of how things work there. That doesn't mean I have the answers to everything by any means, but I have a pretty good idea of how things actually happen. And I'm a lawyer. I have a pretty good idea of what the law says is supposed to happen. And it's not a stretch to say that what we're seeing in Washington right now in lots of different places is definitely not the way it's supposed to be. And I'm not saying that there's only one group of people that's behaving badly. There's bad behavior all over the place. But we do have this document called the Constitution. It's kind of important. It was created by those really smart people that founded our country and had put a lot of thought into it. And this whole idea of separation of powers is a big deal. It, something which I think President Trump is unaware of is the idea that there is no difference in the weight of authority between the president and Congress or between the President and the Supreme Court, or between the Supreme Court and Congress. So Congress has equal balanced power with the other two branches. The President has equal balanced power with the other two branches, and the Supreme Court has equal balanced power with the other two branches. The duties are divided with checks and balances. That's the way it works. That's why what Devin Nunes did last week was so extraordinary. Now, we don't really know what he actually did because nobody saw him. And there's some reasons to question what he actually did, whether he really went to the White House at night. One version is he went during the day. Another was at night. Who knows? All we know is that he claims to have had a meeting with somebody at the White House where he got to see some documents that he hasn't shown with anybody else. And the next day he held a news conference and that was weird. Two days later, he apologized, or the next day he apologized for that. But he said he did it because he had a duty to the president to share this information with him. Okay, back up a second here. Congressman Nunes, and I apologize if my pronunciation is not correct. I know it's not Nunez because he's Portuguese descent, not, not Mexican. Anyway, the congressman who's the chairman of the Intelligence Committee, his duty is to the people of the United States, not to the president. He does not answer to the president, but somehow he thinks he does. The fact that he said he had a duty to share this investigative information with the subject of the investigation basically means that everything he's doing is in question. Now, fast, okay, so that was last week. So he, in my mind, he was already kind of unable to do the job. Now, we're into the next week. And we find out that the, the hearing, one of the hearings that he canceled, the hearing that was going to be today, Sally Yates, the acting attorney general that Trump fired, was going to testify. And it was very clear 
that her testimony was going to contradict some of the statements that other members of the administration have made in public. And that is important. They were going to, she was going to contradict public statements. The Washington Post published this morning letters showing that the administration, that the White House lawyers were trying to claim that Ms. Yates' testimony would be infringing on executive privilege. Those of us old enough to remember Watergate will remember executive privilege. That was a big, big deal. <laughs> that was how Richard Nixon tried to cover up Watergate. Um, there are many, many, many reasons why the White House claim that Ms. Yates' testimony infringes on executive privileges, uh, executive privilege is, is preposterous. Um, first of all, she's no longer a government employee, so to some extent the White House doesn't have direct authority over her. So that's, that's one issue that would have to be resolved. Um, it's true there is this concept of executive privilege. The, the, the president absolutely has the right, and it's an important right, to be able to seek counsel from advisors and have that conversation be kept confidential. But that privilege doesn't apply if there's illegal stuff discussed. And it also doesn't apply if the person who, who holds that privilege discloses it. So in other words, if an attorney has a conversation with a client, the attorney is bound to confidentiality, unequivocal. But if the client shares information from that conversation with somebody who has nothing to do with that matter, and that other person publishes the information, the attorney, the information is no longer privileged because it's been published. Now, most attorneys would not do anything to further the publication. That's a, an ethical issue. That's a separate thing. But the privilege only applies to that which is already confidential and which is not in opposition to public policy. So if there may have been a law broken, Ms. Yates is probably under obligation ethically to disclose it. Now, whether it can be disclosed in an open hearing or needs to be in a, in a private hearing, that's a separate issue. But to cancel the hearing, that's not okay. But this whole charade last week with the White House uh, visit, I think we're going to visit from the, uh, from the janitor here for a second. Uh, uh, it's right there. The, the, that whole episode was, was a distraction. And that's, that's part of the game. And we need to make sure that we don't do it. And that's, that's a big part of what Professor Reich was saying really, really important that we not let that happen. So that's, that's one of the things, one of the things that's happening right now that is so important. Um, we need to hear from Sally Yates. We need to hear from uh, former uh, director Clapper, who was also going to testify. Um, you know, the, the Republicans in the White House do not want those people testifying in public. And Right there, that tells me that there's something wrong. Um, you know, if nothing wrong was done, the Trump administration should be demanding a swift, open investigation so that we can get done with it and move on. I would hope that there are more important things to worry about. But the fact is, we keep hearing about more of the White House insiders having meetings with Russian contacts. And that's not good. 
you know, Jared Kushner having uh, have, having a meeting with the bank that was used for laundering spy money while we had sanctions against that bank and that wasn't disclosed previously, we have questions. They need to be answered. So we should do that. Um, and this is where we all come in. We need to demand that Congress really push this investigation. Um, really, really important. Um, and um, Lisa is asking about the uh, the report that uh, the congressman said that he was walking around the White House grounds at night. Um, there's been some confusion about whether it was at night or during the day. He says that he's got access and it would be okay. Um, no, it doesn't work that way. So uh, although actually there was that person that jumped the vents and was on the grounds for 17, 17 minutes, so maybe he could, but um, there's a lot about his story that just doesn't make sense. The truth is if he accessed the White House premises to get into a skiff, the, one, of the, one of the places where you can go to access confidential information, there are logs and he would have needed an escort. Now, there are a couple of possible possibilities for, for who might have been his escort. Um, the Trump administration hired away his, one of his aides a couple of weeks ago. So that might be his source. That might have been his, uh, his entree. Um, it's also possible that, that that person was hired to the White House as part of an effort to undercut the investigation. Question. The other thing um, did anybody else notice that uh, Boris Epstein was dismissed on Saturday? This was a White House communications aide who uh, part of his job was to be a liaison with the TV networks and he got into fights with producers and, and, and really kind of burnt some bridges. Um, he was a college classmate of Eric Trump, um, born in Russia, an investment banker, um, he was um, he was one of the people that was defending Vladimir Putin during the campaign on behalf of the Trump campaign. Um, you know, I think as this investigation goes on, we're seeing more and more people attached and dismissed, and they're trying to trying to separate. So anyway, there are way more questions than we have answers to, and the fact is we're going to be handicapped until we get the answers. So we need to do it. All right. So the, that's the Russia stuff, but that's not everything that's going on. There's still stuff happening besides that. So um, does anybody care about privacy of your internet information, your, your, your data privacy? Um, I don't know about you, but I'd kind of like to keep my, my personal information personal. Um, well, the Republicans in Congress are trying to lift the restrictions on how your internet service provider can use your data. And um, there, there's some interesting philosophical debates here, but um, shouldn't we err on the side of privacy? I would think the answer is yes, but this bill seems to be fast tracking through. Uh, you know, if you care about it, this might be the time to speak up about it. And then there's the environment. Oh, wow. Um, has anybody here used coal as a heating source? I was in a home briefly in Washington, D.C. that still had coal. Oh, my God, that was that wasn't wasn't good for breathing <laughs> or anything else. The black soot. Uh, yeah, I ditched that as quick as quick as I could. Now, there there's there are ways to make coal burn a little cleaner, but the fact is, it's outmoded technology. California last week, um, I, I'm not sure which day it was. I think it might have been Wednesday or Thursday. Sixty percent of the energy used in California on one day last week was from renewable energy. Most of it solar. Sixty percent in one day. Why can't other people do that? Um, look at all the jobs created. 
solar energy is growing. Natural gas is growing. Um, wind power is improving. There's so many ways that we can have a range of energy sources. Um, you know, to be going back to coal isn't the right way to do it. I mean, I feel bad for the coal miners who are going to be out, out of jobs, but I'd rather have programs, honestly, programs like what Hillary Clinton was proposing, where we find ways to re-employ the coal miners in jobs where we're creating new technology for energy. Those people have skills that can be applied to technology that's going to bring us into the future, not the past. That, to me, would make more sense. Um, but here, here's the other part of today's environmental uh, regulations rollback that, that's, that's important. In order to comply, in, in order to roll back these rules, the administration has to be able to show that um, the numbers add up, that the economics make sense. And the Obama administration, when they implemented the clean power rules, showed the economic impact of global warming and of continued burning of fossil fuels and the bonus, the benefit to the overall economy of encouraging fuel efficiency. In order to roll those rules back, the Trump administration is now going to have to go through a process. This can't be done overnight, no matter how much Trump wants to do things by fiat. They're going to have to go through a process where they have to document and prove that global warming is not going to be an economic burden and that these that rolling back these regulations really will make economic sense. Now, I don't know how they're going to do that, but I think this is something we need to be watching. Um, you know, again, it's not a private company. There is a process. They have to follow the rules. And their you know, regulations can't be implemented overnight. They have to go through public comment and review. They have to comply with the legislation that authorized them. And of course, Trump is trying to get a lot of those laws changed, and that's something we need to watch. But the fact is, the laws exist. So let's keep an eye on all of those things. So, um, you know, Kevin is asking if we can be uh, hoping for an impeachment. I, I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm really worried that there will be, there will either be an actual uh, physical attack, terrorist attack uh, on, on on the country, or they will gin something up and get people scared, and consolidate power to thwart whatever investigation or process might remove Trump or anybody else. Uh, that's a real, a real worry for me. Um, we know from numerous polls that people in the middle of the country, the people who voted for Trump are, are absolutely still supporting him. There's a lot about that that makes no sense to me, but um, you know, they're, they are happy that he is just saying, you know, he's flipping the bird to the system and to the liberal elites and whatever. People are not aware yet that some of these actions are going to actually hurt them. Now, if more of their neighbors get deported, Maybe that'll change. I don't know. I feel horrible for the people like the family in Chicago that was awakened before dawn a couple days ago by ICE. They raided a home where there were no illegal aliens. They were residents, longtime residents. There were no weapons in the home. Uh, as far as we know, they had no warrant, and they shot a man. And uh, last I heard, he was in critical condition. Um, Lots of questions that need to be answered about that. Um, my hope is that we can get the real patriots, Republicans, Democrats, 
you know, this should not be a partisan issue. Uh, you know, the Republicans won the election. They won the election. They get to make the policies, fine. But the rule of law is the rule of law. And the Constitution says that Congress has oversight over the president. So if we have a congressional oversight committee that's not doing their job, then we need to make sure they do their job. And we need to be demanding action uh, from the people elected and sworn to do those responsibilities. And if the current president is unable to faithfully execute the laws and adhere to the Constitution of the United States, then he should face the, those, those consequences. But that's up to Congress and all of us. Thank you all for joining me. Uh, please let me know what you think. I look forward to your suggestions. Um, I'm going to be doing these, as I said, on a regular basis. I'm going to do them at least once a week. I will s probably do a regular schedule once I figure out the whole format. But uh, most likely, um, it'll be, I think, Thursdays. We'll see. Um, but send me your questions, and um, let's keep the conversation going. Thanks so much.